And welcome to the Go Earn It podcast. It is episode eight. I'm your host, Shane Sparks. Our guest today, I got to look at some of the notes because so many accolades. This is Dom Bradley, 34-year-old Dom Bradley, two-time NCAA All-American, 17 times he's wrestled in the U.S. Open. He's won it four times. He's fresh off a senior nationals title, three-time Pan American champion, junior world champion. This guy has pretty much done it all. Now he's an assistant coach uh, back at his alma mater under Brian Smith at Missouri. Dom, I'm fired up about this. Thank you for the time, and congratulations on your latest title. What a run in Fort Worth. Yeah, um, it was crazy to even be there. I honestly did not think I was going to wrestle this year. Um, I wrestled in the 23 World Team Trials in Colorado, and uh, I, I ran through some buzzsaws. I wrestled uh, Ty Walls, and then Nick Wazdowski, and then Tony Cassiope, and then Wyatt Hendrickson. And uh, let me tell you, those are some studs. And uh, after that tournament, I've never been so sore in my life that I was like, I don't want to wrestle anymore. And then uh, lo and behold, we had uh, six heavyweights on our roster at the end of 2023 in May. And uh, four of the <laughs> the six got hurt. So, uh, you know, Zach Elam's a six-year senior, uh, junior world silver medalist, NCL All-American. And um, he's just gotten really big and nobody – he couldn't – I had to go with him every day. And it's like, I'm in shape, so I might as well just go to this tournament. And, uh, yeah, I was just blessed with uh, the support of my wife and my kids and Coach Maple um, and my high school coach, Mike Haggerty, that still trained me. And uh, Coach Smith let me go. I got to miss a duel yesterday to go, but it was fun. <laughs> what impressed you most in the way that you wrestled? I mean, what was working? And, and now, you know, as a coach yourself, when you when you analyze uh, your performance, both as an athlete and with that coaching hat on, you know, what are things that you really pick up on and, and what was the difference? Um, Just staying in a good position. Um, you know, I'm 34 years old and uh, – you know, I'm not the same as I was when I was 23. I hear, I hear uh, Christian Piles and uh, all those guys on Flow Radio say, "Yeah, Dom's just gonna win a two to one match." And it's like, guys, like my knees hurt, my shoulders hurt, my biceps torn, my pec is torn. Um, I've had you know so many PRPs in my knees, and it's like, can I just get like a hey, good job, you're wrestling? Um, you know, how many people have wrestled Gable Stevenson like four or five times? I mean. I actually beat that guy. He's an Olympic champ, and I beat Travel Delagnif. It's like I'm not as good as I once was, but I still have a little something left. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, it was fun. I, I just tell my guys that I just want you guys to go out there and compete. It doesn't matter if you get your hand raised, if it's a double overtime ride out or you get a push out or a stall call. Uh, as long as you get your hand raised, there's no style points, I guess. Like, you all get a trophy someday. So, uh, yeah, that's what I thought about. Where did you learn, Dom, to compete? Like, where do you get that from? Just knowing how to fight and compete. Man. Um, so I'd say it's a three-part answer. Uh, one, I would say my parents. Um, when I was a kid growing up wrestling, uh, you know, I lived in Iowa until I was like in fifth or sixth grade. And uh, my mom and dad would put me in the age group above uh, and made me wrestle that and wrestle kids my own age. So I was just, I've just been used to that. Um, I had a, two really good high school coaches in Mike Haggerty. Um, he's in charge of the Big Ten officials and the MAC officials. He's in the Hall of Fame for all these great things. And uh, the number one thing is he'd always say compete. And my other high school coach, Matt Cox, he literally beat me up every day. And uh, I just had nothing to do with it. And one of the pillars of Tiger Style is, is compete. Um, to believe, compete, one more um expect to win and uh just all these things of tiger styles competing and uh you know i've i've wrestled in so many tournaments back to back or the same day i can remember growing up wrestling in u20s in the u.s open at the same time just walking off the mat going to the next mat this that's just what i do and that's what i want my kids to do i don't want somebody to say you know i'm tired or i don't feel good you know what happens in the national finals if you blow your knee out you're gonna wrestle so uh just have fun. Um, I don't know too many 34 year olds wrestling. Um, so I'm just trying to have fun as long as I can, as the body can hold up. That's my next question. I told you that with these interviews, a lot of times I kind of keep it in order chronological, go through some different things. I'm like, with you, it's going to be a little bit different. One of the first questions I want to ask you is you're 34 years old. You've wrestled so many times. I mean, you obviously 
love this. I mean, you must love wrestling. And how how do you still love it? And I guess, you know, going back, and I know you've been around this for so long, but when did you develop a love for the sport? And how did that love stick? Uh, well, how do I still do it? I trained really smart. Um, I just watched this weekend. I saw so many guys that, you know, they're still training like they're in college. And I just, I just think that's insane. I, there's no way I can do it. And, uh, you know, Kendrick Maple is my coach. He's been my coach for the last six years. And, uh, I, I probably don't practice more than an hour. Um, I just come in, get really hot and, uh, we just work on a couple of areas and I either go live or, you know, there's not much running for me. Um, you know, I, I keep my, my stats on my, this thing called a whoop. I read my stats all the time. Uh, my resting heart rate is uh, 41. So a lot of people tell me that's crazy. So that means I'm in good shape. Um, but I just, I just train smart. There's days that, you know, I think last week coach Maple told me to take a Wednesday off and not do anything. And uh, I think I was just driving my wife crazy around the house. I was like, well, what can I do? Uh, can I, can I do this? And she's like, leave me alone. Um, so, yeah, I, I remember being at kids club practice that night trying to tell these kids like, Hey, let's wrestle. And they're like, I'm not going to wrestle you coach Dom. Um, so yeah, I guess, I guess that's the answer. I just love to compete. So. How did you get introduced to wrestling? Funny story. I took a, a flyer home one time and my dad actually wrestled in high school and uh, I didn't, I never knew he wrestled. And, uh, you know, I kind of did it recreational. And then he said, do you want to do this for real? And I said, okay. And uh, growing up in Iowa, that's wrestling is life. Um, when I was a kid and actually I hated it. I hated it forever. My dad would, you know, pop in a, an Iowa tape, you know, I'd be watching, uh, Dan Gable show technique or Tom Brands or Terry Brands or uh, Joe Williams, who was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up when I was a kid. And, you know, Iowa public television, you had to watch the Iowa, Iowa state tool. And uh, my dad just really, you know, made me watch that stuff. And I kind of was okay with it. I, I thought I was going to be a great basketball player. That was really my goal. And then uh, one day he broke it to me. He said, you're pretty short. You're a little chubby kid right now. You're never going to be good at basketball. Um, but then one year, my mom just started to coach me, and uh, she said, I don't care how you do, what happens, I just want you to have fun. And uh, my dad had a job, so he was working nights, so it's hard for him to go to tournaments in the morning when he'd go up to the afternoon. And honestly, I'd wrestle probably two matches, and he'd show up for the finals. He's like, what? How'd you get in the finals? And I'm like, oh, mom told me to go have fun, and uh, that's what happened. Uh, he'll probably tell you it's a different story. But, uh, yeah, my my parents just really told me to just go have fun and uh, – show great sportsmanship um i can remember one time i got in trouble and my mom and dad made me write the, the, the dictionary look up definitions of everything a sportsmanship being a good sport uh you know all these things and they made posters and hung them up in my room for a year so uh kids better learn that not to be like that how old were you when you started wrestling oh i think i was like seven or eight so 34 i've been wrestling a long time <laughs> <laughs> Man, almost three decades of our wrestling. Super successful at Blue Springs in Missouri. Three-time state champion. You talked about Mike Haggerty uh, and the coaching staff you had. What was the biggest impact that those guys had on you from a, you know, from a wrestling standpoint? And, the, and I, and I know Mike, you know, pretty well. He's one of the best guys you'll ever meet. And, and just as far as developing you as a young man at that time in your mid-teens. Um. Yeah, crazy story. The first high school I went to, I did not get illegally recruited, but I did go to a different high school, uh, but I did wrestle for the Blue Springs Club. So the first high school I went to was was really rough. Um, you know, uh, just to keep it short, uh, you had to go through a metal detector, all these things. So uh, when I moved to Blue Springs, I was in a complete culture shock. Um, you know, that school I was at didn't even have wrestling and people would make fun of me for wrestling. And uh, you know, Coach Hag just made me really believe in myself. I went from a, you know, a chubby kid who just wanted to wrestle to, to get in shape. And, you know, maybe I was going to, I was like, maybe I could be good at football if I'm not going to be a basketball player. And then, uh, you know, uh, I remember having a conversation with Coach Hag saying, dude, one day you could go to college and wrestle. And I was like, what? Like, what is that? And, uh, you know, the stuff I saw, like talking about seeing Joe Williams and, you know, the Brands brothers and, you know, all these 
crazy Iowa guys are. Yeah, I, I remember Brock Lesnar winning national titles. Like that guy's scary. Um, and he talked to me about it, and I I never believed him. Um, and I just got my butt kicked in high school. I mean, my workout partners, I I had a two time All American and uh, D one. His name was Louis Caputo. He wrestled at Harvard. Um, and he won like four Fargo titles. Uh, that was our 189 pounder. Then our heavyweight was, um, uh, a 250 pound man who, uh, ran a four five forty, uh, and he played linebacker and starting nose guard at Mizzou for three years. And, uh, then you had me and I got my butt whooped by those guys for two years. Um, but you know, I just, this stuck to the process, you know, coach Hag would always just talk about, uh, believe in yourself and could control what you could control. And, uh, yeah, I just really followed the plan, and, you know, I just went to every tournament they told me to. They said, if you want to be good, go to this tournament. And I was like, okay. And uh, I can just remember my mom just saying, hey, go hop in the car with this person. You're going to a tournament. You're going to Nebraska, or you're going to, I don't know, Las Vegas. You're going to U, the U-20s or U-17s. I'm like, okay, um, whatever you say. So I just kind of listened to my coaches, and I guess it worked out pretty well. Am I right, Nat, three-time state champ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you win it as a sophomore, basically first year as a starter? I was a freshman. I got lucky and qualified um, at 215. Um, But, yeah, I got, you know, I just, that whole summer I went, my freshman year, I think I went like 26 and 19. I probably got pinned 16 out of those 19 times. Um, I was just a young kid. 14 years old wrestling grown men. And then uh, that whole summer, my coaches again, but literally I remember wrestling in U 17s and I was too young. I had to write a, get a doctor's letter to wrestle in the tournament. And they put me in both styles. Um, And then I remember going to Fargo wrestling Greco. And I remember going to cadet duels wrestling even heavyweight. And I weighed 205 pounds. It was just, uh, Hey, go compete, go compete. And uh, that year when I wrestled sophomore year, it was just, I was the underdog, but I just worked hard, and uh, yeah. And then after that, just got big. <laughs> what do you remember down from your run to a first state title? What do you remember from that sophomore season? <laughs> a lot of extra work after practice. I mean, uh, my high school coach, besides Mike Haggerty, uh, was this this guy named Matt Cox. He's like my best friend, um, who recently just had a stroke, so. I always think about him and all the things, the lessons he taught me. And and that dude, even to this day, is still so happy. Um, and he still talks to me about wrestling. And uh, I just remember staying after every practice and wrestling with him. And I had another coach who was assistant who wrestled at Nebraska. And I would just do things with them after practice. And my mom would be waiting in the parking lot. She didn't care if it was 7 o'clock at night or 6.30. She was just waiting for me. And my parents just had the fullest belief in uh Coach Hag, it was really hard um, for them to be like, why are you staying so late? Uh, but then I started to win, so they really understood it. And as I said, they grew up in Iowa. They knew about wrestling. So when we were in Missouri, it was just like, hey, do what you got to do to be the best. So, What do you remember from the night you won the state title, that first one? Um, smiling like I am right now. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I remember. It was actually in Columbia, believe it or not, the state tournaments in Columbia. Um, so I was just so excited. Uh, just, I just remember winning and just saying, what's next? How can I keep this feeling going? And, uh, I'm going to take my AirPods off, but it was just so fun. And, uh, I just loved wrestling and that was a great feeling. When did it click? that you could be really, really good at this, wrestle at the next level. Do you remember a, a time when that happened? Honestly, it was like my halfway through my junior year. Um, I had a significant injury. I uh, My shoulder popped out, and it's a funny story. <laughs> my high school coaches told me I was being a baby, and one of my, my coach, Coach Cox, I was just talking about, threw me in a preseason practice, and I didn't play football that year. Um, got in the argument with the football coach. I was like, I don't need to play football. I'm like, I'm top 20 in the country. And uh, I remember my coach saying, get up, get up. And I'm like, I can't. And he's like, you need to stop being a baby. So, of course, they tell my mom, like, Dom's being a baby tonight. And I'm like, mom, something's wrong. Like, I'm really, really hurt. Um, but anyways, find out I dislocated my shoulder. And I, I couldn't do anything, but I 
picked it up at one point, put it on my dresser. And I was like, my mom's a nurse. She's a, she worked in a nursing home for 30 years. And I was like, mom, this isn't right. This is all the way down here. And she felt so bad. And she took me to the hospital. Anyways, they told me I tore my labrum and I would be done wrestling for the year. And I was like, there's no way I just, you know, I was double all American at Fargo. Just want to stay title. I'm like, I got to be a three-timer because the guy I was just telling you about Louis Caputo was a three-timer and I wanted to be just like him. Everything that guy did, I wanted to be just as good or if not better than him. And uh, yeah, they told me I would never wrestle that year. And I just said, I'm doing rehab. I'm not getting surgery. And uh, lo and behold, I never got surgery. Um, still haven't gotten it. I have a little bicep tear, um, but that's all right. I tore it twice, tore it, retore it. So it's all right. Man, so that's how you won the title as a junior. I just went hard. I I bumped up to heavyweight. I weighed 220 and just wrestled heavyweight my whole junior year. And um, I think I was 54 and one. I ended the year like six in the country. And then that summer I won Fargo at heavyweight. It was number one in the country. So it was good. What was that feeling like to win in Fargo? Man, that was like a dream. Um, just having um, a stop sign or winning that. That's what I always wanted. And uh it was really, really cool because, like, uh, nobody would told me I'd be number one in the country. I just thought it was like, hey, win. And back then I was in Fargo is the line, uh, the the pools. And I lost second round. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to win. And they're like, there's a chance. you Just every match is do or die. And it was like, it was almost like, you know, when I think of people playing roulette or gambling. I, I wasn't a gambler, but it was just like every match was like, okay, if I win, I could keep going. If I lose, you're out. And uh, I made it all the way down to it was just me and three guys. I was like, well, I'm placing. Uh, and then somehow I won and then I won. And here we are. Do you remember who you beat and where is that stop sign today? Uh, I do remember who I beat. It was uh, Cameron Wade from Ohio. He wrestled at Penn State. He's, yes, he did. Uh, he was a monster. Uh, we grew up all the time wrestling and uh, it was really cool. I honestly could probably tell you every guy I beat at that tournament. Um <laughs> that's how much I love wrestling. Um, but it was really, really fun. Uh, that stop sign. I think my, I think it's in my garage right now. My mom gave me all my trophies a couple of years ago. She made me take them all and I started throwing some away, but, uh, I don't throw away stop signs, the coasters, you know, the third or fourth place ones. That's what I like to call them. That's what my dad would call them. Uh, I still have some of them. My wife doesn't let me throw the ways, the ones from the U S open, but, uh, I still got the stop sign. So it's pretty cool. Where did you meet your wife at? We actually went to high school together. She was a wrestling manager. She was a freshman when I was a senior. And then, uh, yeah, we actually didn't really talk that much in high school. Then, uh, you know, things happen, and now we're together. How long have you been married? Uh, we've been together for 10 years, and we've okay. been married for like five. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Two kids. You're, so your senior year, I'm assuming you just roll everybody as a senior in high school. Actually, believe it or not, I've lost one match to the guy who was ranked third in the country who was actually in my conference. Um, so I wrestled this guy every weekend, and uh, he was in my conference. And that they bracket I won in Fargo, I took first, he took fifth. And uh, we Who's wrestled that? Over. This guy named – he didn't do anything. He won a D2 title. Uh, his name was Elijah Madison. He was really good. He pushed me really hard. Um but it was just, we wrestled all the time. That was the only match I lost my senior year. Um, but that was it. And it pushed me, that one loss pushed me to tell me that I'd work hard. And uh, I made the U20 team that summer as a 18 year old kid. Um, I think I wrestled in every freaking tournament you could possibly wrestle as a senior in high school. I didn't go to senior nationals, but I wrestled in uh, the Western regional. I wrestled in everything uh, that at the same time as U20s, won both of them didn't get a point scored on me. Um, I wrestled in the all-star match, uh, you know, the, the dream team, the Dapper Dan, uh, there's a local all-star match in Kansas city. I went to Pan Ams for both styles for U twenties. Um, so yeah, junior duels, Fargo. I went, even as a senior, I went to Fargo just to get another stop sign. So yeah. Wow. Who did you beat or wrestle at the Dapper Dan? I wrestled some guy and believe it or not, I double legged him and his knee popped out. And he ended up playing football at Buffalo. I don't, I can't remember his name, but I think I'm Facebook friends with him. But he was, pretty, okay. he was a pretty good guy. It's pretty incredible the amount of wrestling you did at a young age. 
How did wrestling on all these big stages really help develop your mind? Because you, I mean, by the, with everything you, we haven't even talked about your college career yet. I mean, you've been wrestling on the, on big stages all over the place. Makes me think when you got to college, I mean, you had been there so many times. What was your mindset like in high school? Um, Go score points. Go score points. That's all it was. And uh, I honestly had one of the, the team Missouri coaches. I'm going to give him a shout out. It's this guy named Reggie Burris. He still coaches. He coaches at Platte County. And uh, I just remember wrestling on that stage at Fargo. You know, every once in a while you get to get on that stage and wrestle a match if it's not in the finals. But if you wrestle on that stage, he goes, this is bigger than the state tournament. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah. So you're going to win this match on the stage. And I'm like, okay. And I didn't place my first year at Fargo. I think I went like four and two in both styles. And he just goes, you're going to win a state title because you wrestled on that stage. And he said, there's nothing bigger than wrestling on that stage. And I just said, okay. And I remember being at the state tournament, um, not being nervous because I was like, I wrestled on the stage at Fargo. I can remember going to U20s in Vegas and wrestling. And, you know, you see guys like uh, – Brett Metcalf and Jared Frey are wrestling over here and I'm wrestling in the little Western regional over here, but it's so cool. You see stuff like that. Or you see Bill Zadick wrestling, or I can remember all these guys or, you know, Doug Schwab. And I remember wrestling Mako and Tommy Rowland, seeing all these guys that I looked up to and I'm like six mats away, but I see them warming up and I'm like, Oh man, this is cool. They warm up the way I do or I do that. So uh, that's what the really cool thing about wrestling is. Was it ever in doubt you were going to Missouri or were you going to Missouri? Did you go on any other visits or was it Missouri all the way? No, I went on a, I went on a couple of visits. I went to the university of Minnesota. Um, they tried to get me to work out with uh, Cole Conrad and I was scared. King Cole, that. Freedom, Wisconsin, yeah. Wisconsin guy. They told me yes. the story how big he was. And uh, I was really close to going to Minnesota. Um, Tom Brands and, and uh, Dan Gable came to my house uh, when they first got the job. And they told me I was going to be an Iowa Hawkeye because I was born there, but I was living in Missouri. And uh, it just didn't work out there. I ended up going to Missouri, uh, which is a crazy story. But it was it was pretty good. I wouldn't change my career. Um, a lot of schools called me. A lot of schools told me I wasn't, uh, you know, I just wasn't big enough or I was too short or they had somebody better than me. And a lot of those schools, I beat their guys to prove them wrong or – as I got older, I beat their coaches on the senior level when I was in college just to let them know, hey, you should have recruited me. What was the key to going to Missouri? I mean, how how did that happen? So um, at the time, that was when Ben Askren was a senior. But when I was Another growing, Wisconsin guy. Yeah, love Wisconsin. And we haven't even talked about Keegan O'Toole yet. I mean. <laughs> no, I, lo- I got a lot of Wisconsin people I love. Um But, yeah, that's just when Missouri was getting good. So I remember being a kid in middle school, like, Missouri, dang, they stink. Like, And then as I got older, oh, Ben Askren's in the finals. Oh, maybe I can go there. And I kind of started to think, maybe if this guy keeps losing the finals, like, well, maybe I could be the first national champ at Missouri. Um, And then he won it my junior year, and I was like, well, dang, maybe I could be the second or the third. Um, So that's how I started to approach it. And, uh yeah, and then my senior year, they that's the year they had a great run. They took second at national duels. Uh, they took third at NCAs and got a team trophy. And I was like, good thing I signed here because they're going to be good. And, uh, yeah, it worked out pretty good. What's your first memory of Brian Smith? I just remember him just, like, casually kind of, like, looking at me. Because, um, like I said, my other teammate was really good, Louis Caputo, and he wanted him. Um but I just remember, you know, Coach Hag calling Coach Smith and saying, hey, you're really going to want this kid. And I remember Coach Smith kind of was like, okay. Um, but I already signed a – there was another kid in Mark Ellis who would end up being a national champ. And there's another guy in Missouri they signed, uh, the two grades above me. Um, they were both state champs the same year I was. So I won it as a sophomore. The other guy was a junior state champ. Mark Ellis was a senior state champ. We somehow all end up at Missouri at the same time. And – uh Yeah, it was some battles, some battles. Yeah, that's interesting. And I wanted to dive into this because just, you know, doing some research on your career at Missouri, I didn't realize there was that kind of overlap with you and Mark Ellis. So, yeah. yeah. So you, 08, 09, you're a redshirt freshman. And you, you, you take, 
what, fourth of the Midlands. You beat David Zabriskie from Iowa State, who was a who was a stud. And that's the year Mark Ellis wins a national title, correct? Yeah, I beat him in the black and gold that year, too. I mean, what was that? What was that like during that time? Like, how did that all sort itself out? <laughs> Actually, um, Ellis, I think, won it in no, I, I think yeah. he did win it in 09. Yeah. Yeah. Um I don't know. It was crazy. Um, I beat him in black and gold, but uh, just that year, you know, I beat David Zabriskie. I think my career record against David Zabriskie is two and one. I think Mark's was like, oh, and nine never beat David Zabriskie. Um, so they just put us in the Midlands bracket and they said, whoever does better at this tournament wins. And lo and behold, I get David Zabriskie second round and, uh, you know, I beat him and I'm like, dang, I'm going to win this tournament. And uh, the, the sport of wrestling just has a great way of uh, humbling you. And I'm wrestling a guy who I wrestled first round at the U.S. Open this year and Dan Erickson, who was a Big Ten champ for Iowa. And he's the only guy who ever turned me in college. And he beat me, turned me at the Midlands, and I lost. And Mark Ellis ended up winning. And he ended up getting the spot that year. And uh, it was very tough because he ended up getting injured after that. And I won a lot of big duels for us that year. I won a, a duel against Cornell. I forgot another team I won a duel. They just put me out there. I was a freshman heavyweight, and I'm winning duels. And it, it was crazy. I'm not going to say what was going on with other schools contacting me, but there's a lot of schools telling me that I could be their guy. But uh, I didn't want to leave Missouri. I mean, I was close to my parents, um, so I just didn't really want to leave. Uh, so I stayed. Then the next year, Mark tells me he's going to play football after he wins a national title. And I'm like, great. So uh, I was still down on myself because he won a national title. I said, what can I do to top that? And I said, I'm going to go win a junior world title. And I won a junior world title that summer. And I made the U.S. national team as a 19-year-old. And uh, that was just my goal. I was like, I'm going to be on a national team and I'm going to do great things. And I think I'm going to be the guy. And I get back in junior worlds and Mark Ellis gets cut from the football team. And, uh, yeah. So we go Don Bradley, Mark Ellis, round 17. And uh, we actually end up, Coach Smith said, I don't know who I'm going to start. We have a, a junior world champion, an NCAA champion, wrestling off. And uh, it was really tough. I mean, it was – Shane, when I tell you that this was like the hardest thing in my life, it's the hardest thing. Even now, still talking about it, it's so hard. Even I see Mark Ellis all the time, and we still just kind of say, man, that was some of the craziest stuff that ever happened in our life. I mean, it was just, you know, we would wrestle each other, and it would be a 28-minute match in practice. And I wouldn't leave until he quit or he wouldn't leave till I quit. So we would just go to where the coach was like, get out of the room. Dude, you guys can't wrestle. And it was so bad. And uh, we ended up wrestling at the use, uh, local tournament. Mark Ellis lost in the backside and ended up losing on the backside. We wrestled. I beat him there. We wrestled at the Penn State Open. I beat him there. And then we end up wrestling at Midlands and I lose. Um, but, you know, Coach Smith just picked him. I couldn't really complain about it. Um, it really stink. But, uh you know, I, it made me a stronger person and uh, it just made me, you know, want to compete. And it's like, I tried to compete and I just couldn't. Um, so that summer I still went and made a national team again. I was 20 years old, made a national team. And I was just really humbled. And I was like, I'm going to be a, a national champ. And that was my goal. And, uh, you know, just got to be a starter the next two years, two or three years. I find these conversations fascinating. I mean, because... I mean, quite frankly, Dom, something goes this way or that way by about that much. Yeah. You, you could be winning national titles freshman, sophomore year. During that time, I'm trying to really dive deep into this because, it again, it's fascinating. How did you persevere and get through that? Because that is, that's pretty wild. I don't know. Maybe, maybe God had a different plan for me. Maybe... There's something in the air, but you know, my parents was like, you need to leave. And I just didn't want to be a, a quitter. I never wanted to be a quitter. I never wanted to quit on my teammates. I had so many lifelong friends that were there at Missouri. Um, so it was just like, you know, you know what, like at the end of the day, I mean, I can't tell you who took fifth place at heavyweight in 2009. I can't remember. I can tell you one, but I can't remember, but, um, my honest thing now is as I'm coaching and, you know, being an athlete, I'm like, people don't remember you for your results. They remember you for the person you were and the teammates you were. Um, 
So in five years, nobody's going to probably remember if you were an All-American, but they're going to remember, was that guy a good teammate? Was he a good friend? Uh, was he there in a time of need? And I think that's how I try to teach the youth kids I coach. I try to teach my guys that, hey, I want you all to be national champs, but it's physically not possible. But uh, I want you to do your best and, and be a good person in society. And uh, I guess that's just how my mom and dad raised me. I think they did something pretty good with that. All great programs have a level of tension in the room. Oh, how yeah. did you put into words the tension with you and Mark those two years? Man, I don't even know. I've never seen anything like that. I Every wrestle-off situation I'm ever around, I try to tell people, I'm like, I don't feel sorry for you. Or I hear about other situations of, you know, I can remember Penn State having, you know, Anthony Kassar and uh, what was his name? Shakur Rashid. And yep. I was like, they're going to figure it out. Um, you know, one one ended up winning a national title. The other one's a two-time All-American. It's like, I still didn't feel bad for those guys because my situation was way worse. I was on the national team. I'm I'm going to overseas and winning tournaments. And these guys are like battling it out. You know, one guy's beating Colin Moore and other guys majoring this guy. I'm just like, stuff like that's just crazy. And um, the tension was like, I mean, we didn't like to practice with each other. Uh, we didn't want to be around each other. It was just, you know, I can remember breaking the squat record at Missouri, hitting like, I don't know, 455 for seven. And I see him look right over and he's doing 460, slide the two and a half on, and he did 460 for seven. I'm like, well, this guy right here. Um, but when he's in life, you got to compete, right? And, you know, you have jobs in society or, you know, you you just got to compete. You got to find a way to win. So it's like, how can you get the next step up? So I think it really helped me in life. It's not my favorite thing to talk about. But, uh, you know, if, if you ever talk to Mark about it, we could probably sit here and do a whole documentary about it. It'd be pretty crazy. Would you have one story that stands out? When I say Don Bradley, Mark Ellis, one story that sums up, encapsulate, en encapsulates, is that the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it getting too tricky there. Uh, th th that two years as teammates, is, is there a story that would really – sum that up nah i would just say we usually do like a saturday matches in missouri and you have like three or four matches and uh like i said we wrestled for 28 minutes straight there was no takedowns there was no ride outs none of the coaches wanted to tell us to quit it literally was to the point where we were both falling over sweat everywhere blood you know punches everything tempers flared and none of the coaches could say anything what are they going to say it's just two men trying to prove, and you know, it's it's September. It's not even October. Um, yeah, that was just how it was. And it wasn't like I hated him. It wasn't like he hated me, but it was just like I wanted to be better. And everybody was going to say, hey, well, Tom's better than you. And he was like, well, I won a national title. So um, there's just so much drama filled with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we're still cool, like, I see him at all the FCA events. He invites me to him. I go to him. I talk to him. Uh, he's in charge of the Midwest FCA. So, um, you know, greater things happen in life. It's crazy. He came back and coached me one year, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> in in all that, as you mentioned, you won a junior world title. What was that experience like? Honestly, I didn't even know. I like I didn't even know what that meant. I just wanted to go wrestle, and uh, I wrestled, and I just kept winning, and I was just like all right, this is fun. This is fun. And then when I won and they were like, this is a big deal. And I was just like, mm, I didn't think these guys were that good. And they were like, no, you're just that good right now at the time. And I was like, okay, I sure. Funny enough, I made the junior world team three times and I only went to world championship once. I would get scared. I didn't want to go because I didn't want to miss school or, you know, the coaches couldn't go. So somebody from team USA would have coached me. And I was just, I was just kind of immature. I wanted people to be with me. And uh, finally, the last year I made it, they were like, you have to go. And I'm like, eh, I got summer school. I don't want to go. And they were like, you're going. And lo and behold, I won. And they said, why wouldn't you go the two years before? You could have been a three-time champ. I was like, I have no idea. So, yeah. Dom, it's officially maybe the craziest story I've ever heard in my life. I mean, these <laughs> podcasts are fun. Because you learn stuff you, that you would have never in a million years known. You're telling me, I'm like trying not to get, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone right now. You're telling me you made three junior world teams and didn't go twice? Yeah. 
Yeah. That is whacked out. Yeah, it was crazy. The first one I didn't want to go because it was the middle of my freshman year and it was like the first week of college. And I was like, I don't want to miss the first week of college. I heard there's crazy stuff going on. And I called the coach at the time. Like, I'm not going. They're like, what? You can't tell us whatever. Who was the yeah. who was the coach there? Who did you have to call? Um God, what was his name? Let me think about it. It'll come to me. Oh, Doc Bennett. Doc Bennett. Doc he <laughs> he hates me for that. He still tells that story to this day when I see him. So then the next year I make the team, I win U 20s at the same time. And they're like, Are you going? And I'm like, Yeah. And then I ask like Coach Smith, I'm like, so who's gonna go to the tournament with me? And they're like, You're just gonna go. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going. I'm not going. It's like, call them again. I'm not going. I'm not going. I don't want to go. And they're like, are you serious? And so then the next year, I got to eat 20s again. And uh, they're like, you have to go. You have to go. And finally, Coach Smith and I tell Doc, and they're like, one of your coaches has to go. So um, Lee Pritz was the coach at the time. And he he went oh, with great me. great guy. Yeah, he, yeah, he went with me. And, uh, yeah, we won. So it was fun. So then you come back junior year. Now it is your spot. Go to the national tournaments, and you take third. Uh, yep. Drop the match in the semis, which, you know, now after everything you've told me, I'm really impressed, Dom, that you took third place. Because I could just about imagine the heartbreak of losing in the semis. Yeah, especially when you lose to a guy you've beaten so many times, and Zach Ray was tough. He was a national champion. He has a great yes. year. Um, but, you know, uh, like I said, it doesn't define who I am. Um, I think Zach Ray would always say, he, "He, we had this conversation actually like this summer. He said, man, you're a junior world champ. That's so freaking cool. I really wanted to be that because that's who I beat to make the team. Okay. You know, I, dang, I wanted to be a national champ. I'd rather be a national champ. And it was like, we almost wanted to switch roles. <laughs> and then I bet you if we would have switched roles, we probably wouldn't want to switch back. So, um, yeah, it was cool. But, I mean, I wrestled Zach a million times and – uh you know, I think I beat him one more time than he beat me. So uh, we just wrestled a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's, it was cool. What do you remember from losing in the semis and then having to get it back together mentally and be ready to take third place? Because I've always thought, um, I mean, obviously it's great to win. But I, I'm more impressed with guys that take third. Maybe they, you know, Nick Lee for Penn State his freshman year loses in the first round, comes back to take fifth. I mean, I just, that, that backside, that to me is where it's like, you got to have some big stones on that backside. That is great courage, toughness. You don't trip on third or fifth place. Not that you do on first place, but you understand what I'm saying. What do you remember from getting it together and coming back and finding a way to take third? As we say in wrestling, you got the next best thing. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, I can tell you how many times I've taken third. I've taken third so many times. So uh, my parents just said, don't ever be a quitter. Like I told you earlier, don't be a quitter. Just go do what you can do. And uh, you always try to end on a win. You don't ever want to end on a loss. That's what I think of. It's crazy. It's guys who retire and they end on a loss. I'm like, man, I'm going to go out and win. Um, but yeah, I just remember that match. I'm losing and I'm just like, what do I do? And I just remember like, I just got to do the next best thing. And um. I will tell you those guys who wake up on Saturday morning at the NCAA tournament, they are mad, they're angry, um, but you don't want to end like that. You don't want that to be what defines you. And, uh, yeah, taking third, I remember finally I didn't I didn't really want to rest those matches, but I won. And afterwards I just had the same big smile like I won. I was like, well, that's the best I can do, so – um, you don't like it at the time, but then as you get older, you realize, Hey man, third place was pretty cool. So all American, uh, two years later, correct. Take an Olympic red shirt, 2012. Then in 2013, uh, you take fourth place and as a two-time all American, when you look back on your career at Missouri, super, you know, super interesting. What are you most proud of? Mm. I just wrestled in every freaking tournament there was i would go to the the local tournaments around here i'd go to ucm open i'd go to the missouri valley i'd go to nebraska to wrestle in some some small town tournament i'd go to midlands i'd go to scuffle i'd go to wherever i would just go wrestle and uh i think my senior year i was 39 and three and i only lost two matches at the national tournament and i beat every single all-american that year 
I beat the guy who took first, second. I took fourth. I beat the guy who took third, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. It's just, just wasn't my day. It just wasn't my day. I couldn't say, I just remember in my senior speech at my banquet, I just go, I'm the best guy in the bracket. Just, just wasn't on whatever, March 23rd. Um, and it really made me think about if I really wanted to wrestle. I think if I would have won, I would have never wrestled again. I would have never been a four-time senior national U.S. Open champ. Probably would have never wrestled again. I would just ran off to the sunset, had been a college coach, but uh, maybe that's why I'm still uh, competing because I didn't win a national title. Man, if I had to give you one do-over, if you had one do-over, Don, whatever it might be, I mean, it could be anything. You get one do-over during your entire career at Missouri. You get one. What would it be? Um, to get better grades. Really? Yeah. Talk, talk about that some more. Um, I just finished with my master's degree last year. Oh, congrats. And yeah. So I really wish I would have, you know, taken school a little more serious. I know I finished with a 3.97 um, last year while, while coaching, being on a national team and coaching a youth club and having kids. So I did all that at the same time. And uh, if I could do that, I was like, man, I could have done that in college. Uh, so I really wish I would have had a, you know, a tougher, I would have picked a tougher major and uh, maybe try to go to grad school earlier. So that's what I would change. I mean, you can't change a wrestling match. I mean, I wish you could, but I mean, I made lifelong friends. I'm leaving college with little debt, barely any debt. So, uh, you know, two-time All-American, a conference champ on the first team in Missouri ever to beat Iowa. I mean, that's stuff that I remember. Um being on a team that won a, a Big 12 championship and a, a MAC championship. I remember being on the, the first team that started the streak that Missouri still has now. So it's pretty cool. What do you remember from the night you guys beat the Hawkeyes? It was crazy. We uh, forfeited a match and I uh, we were down six nothing right away. And it was just like, hey, we got to win. And it came down to me. I had my first loss of the season. I think I was like 30 and 0, and I lost to the Oklahoma State guy. And then it was like, hey, Dom, we need you to win this match for us to win the duel. And I won and I won in overtime and it was the the greatest thing ever. It was cool because Iowa was so historic at the time. They had Matt McDonough and Tony Ramos and Derek St. John. They had all these great guys, Ethan Loft or Lofthouse, and they yep. had a Bobby Telfer. That's who I beat. And it was just like, goodness gracious, Micah Burak was their 97 pounder. And we beat yes. that team. And I think that was like kind of the start. You know, I think Ben Askren senior team, they were probably the best team ever. And I'm not saying we were the best team ever, but we kept the tradition going. And then we passed it on to, to Jaden Cox. And then we passed it on to, you know, the Daniel Lewis's. And now he's passing it on to the Brock Maulers and the Keegan O'Toole. So, yeah. You're wrestling a ton, you know. So I'd be curious to get your uh, perspective on this, obviously coaching now too. So back when you're wrestling, I mean, growing up, you are wrestling a ton. You know, now these days guys are wrestling – Seems to be 20, 25 matches at the most. You know, what's your, you know, what's your take on how often to wrestle? And, and is that is that changed for you over the years? Man, I'm not the greatest at this. You know, Coach Smith has a great philosophy on it. And uh I think it's kind of like some of these kids, there's a national tournament every week. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's, you know, there's Bruta Diaz National, there's, there's, I don't know, Dixie Nationals, there's senior nationals there's um uh, u20 trials there's, there's trials. too many national too types. many and i just think it's like you only have so many matches in your body um if you're not training right and then it's how do you be a high school kid and i just when a college kid it's like hey you're going to class uh you got to train hard you're you're getting your butt kicked and it's just like if you're not doing those things right your body's gonna break down on you so i don't really know the answer i wish i was uh a scientist with that or a strength coach or the head coach. I'm not a head coach yet. So uh, I don't, I try to keep stay in my lane, but I just think that sometimes there's, it's good to have your bodies resting. It's not like I'm going to, I would love to go to the, what is it? The Uregan, but it's just like, I can't, I'm, I'm a coach. I have kids. I have a wife. I have a job. It's just, it's hard. Um, but when I do compete, you, you're damn right. I'm going to go as hard as I can and give you all I got. Um, So if it's the U S open, if it's the Pan Ams, the world team trials, you know, maybe if I could sneak away to a tournament in Cuba or something, that's what I'll try to do. Um, 
but it's competing. It's wrestling. It's like, there's nothing that's going to really change for me. I've been all around the world. I've wrestled everybody. So um, I, I just try to tell these people, just go compete and have fun. It's too, in every interview I said, it's too hard. Wrestling is so hard that if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? I'm going to give you some time on this one. Don't rush it. Take your time. I want to give us a level set, some kind of perspective on how long you've been in this game. So what I want you to do is like rattle off names of guys that you've wrestled over the years and just take your time and, and give me a list. Um, so I wrestled Chavel de Lagnef. I've wrestled, he's a world bronze medalist, Olympic bronze medalist. I've wrestled Gable Stevenson, who's a, um, a, a world Olympic champion, um, freak athlete. Um, I've wrestled Nick Wisdowski. I've wrestled, I mean, Steve Mako. <laughs> I've wrestled Les Sigmund. I wrestled, I was in a bracket with Tolly Thompson, who was this, one of the scariest guys I ever seen. I was so glad I didn't have to wrestle him. Um, Man, I've wrestled Gino Petrosvili. You know, I was winning the whole match and lost at the end. Um, yeah, I've wrestled so many guys. I still look at brackets. I think I beat that guy before. Um, yeah, I, I, I've wrestled so many people. Um, I got to wrestle Jaden Cox when he was a little kid, and I remember wrestling him as a high schooler. I go, oh, my gosh, this is going to be the next big thing. Uh, he's the greatest high school kid I've ever wrestled. And, uh, yeah, so I've, I think I've seen a lot of it. Um. Yeah, it's it's really cool to see how the sports involved. I you could see with the you know the new technology now. If, you know, flow wrestling was just coming out at the end of my high school, and now you could see you could see any move you want to hit. You could see on online or YouTube or you know the RTCs that they, they can go to that that was kind of like right when I was in college. You could start going to colleges to train, and now you have all these kids like your tweet you said uh, yesterday. You know, it's crazy with all these high school kids how they're qualified for Olympic trials and. It's crazy. But the funny thing is I was trying to do the same thing when I was in high school. I was one second away and I was doing the same thing that these guys are doing. So it's, uh, it's crazy. Time, wrestling's evolved. The rules have changed, but it's end of the day, you're still shaking hands and putting your straps on the same way. Two or three guys that are the toughest guys you've ever wrestled of all those great guys. You got two or three that for whatever reason, stand out, man. Ah. Uh, Anybody who's wrestled Steve Mako would tell you it's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> um, it's not fun. And I never beat that guy. The last time I was so close. Um, even when I see that guy now, I'm still like, man, I want to wrestle that dude right, right now. And I know he's like 40 something with his kid. His kid's <laughs> really good. Like, Maybe I can recruit his kid and whoop his kid's ass just to say I can revenge on him. Um, yeah, he was just not fun to wrestle. Like, he was like, just what did he do? What what did he do, Dom? That was just like, damn, come on. He just he was that nickname was the bear. He just a bear. Me. I remember being a freshman in college and him just mauling me, just teching me in 30 seconds and 30 seconds. And uh yeah, that sucked. And then um I just never I beat Travel one time and Everybody told me he was sick, but I'm still going to say I beat him. But I did not like wrestling him. He's so he's so smart. He's so smart about the sport. And I think um, I'm just going to give him his credit. He's probably one of the greatest minds in wrestling right now. And uh, even the guy I wrestled, Christian Lance, I coached that kid. But just hearing the things that Travell was telling him to beat me, it's like, that's the same things that guy was doing to me in 2008 and 2009 and 2010 and 12 and 13, 14, 15. And it's just like, God, I could never – it was just his positioning. He understood the sport. And I, the crazy thing about Travell is that I could still call him to this day and ask him a question about technique and he would understand it just like that. And I would, I remember being in college, kid, Hey, can you tell me, what are you doing when you're thinking about this shot? And he was saying, Oh, well, try this, move your foot this way, move your hands this way. So he was just a savant and it's crazy. People say, and maybe I'm just going on a rant here that heavyweights don't know wrestling, but that guy knows wrestling. And I, I know wrestling too. You know, I coach a lot of our 25s and 33s and I think wrestling's wrestling, but Travell has a really good mind and I'm just going to give him his flowers for that. Um, but I just did not like wrestling him. And of course I wrestled Gable Stevenson. I beat him the first time and I uh, could never beat him again. And um, I'd be okay if I never had to wrestle him again. 
maybe if it was the the winner goes to go see Mason Paris in the finals Olympic trials, I'd be, I'd be okay. Um, but it was fun to wrestle him. I mean, I wasn't going to back down from that guy. I wrestled that guy when he was 14. I was like, damn, this kid's going to be good. And then uh, he beat me. <laughs> He beat me when he was a high school senior, and I was like, this dude's good. So, yeah. Man. Um, God, where was I going to go with this? I had something else lined up. Um, man, I, you just got such great stories. I get lost uh, lost listening to you. Um, what, um, you know, obviously you, you love wrestling. What what else about the sport are you real passionate about? Like, what do you love debating Given your two cents on like any other topics in the sport that uh, r- really, really get you going a little bit. I'm just going to say it. it's too damn hard not to have fun. Like I try to tell my guys on the team, I'm like, Hey, uh, make sure you get your work done and get out of here. And they just want to sit around the room and talk around. I'm like, guys, it's, you know, you're going to work hard. You got to take time off and you got to have fun. Like, yeah, your practice is going to be hard, but, you got to have time where there's fun in it. And uh, I think that's really important. And like tonight I ran a youth practice um, for the youth kids tonight and I was yelling at them. I'm like, Hey, if you guys don't want to listen, we're going to run stairs. I want you guys to learn this technique. And you know, they're like coach Dom, you're mean, you're mean, you're mean. And then at the end of the night we're playing sharks and minnows and they're having the time of their life. Coach Dom, you're the best coach ever, blah, blah, blah. It's just the, the matter of when you're in there, you got to work hard. And when it's time to work hard, you work hard. When it's time to play, it's time to play. And you got to have that balance. You can't take wrestling outside of the wrestling room. It's so hard. Like, I don't want to take my problems from work or, you know, I had a bad day of practice and then take it out on my kids and take it out on my wife or take it out on my parents. It's not cool. Um, So leave wrestling in the wrestling room, maybe decompress for 20 minutes and then it's gone. I know what I wanted to ask you before. The story with you and Christian Lance. I mean, you guys are, are wrestling uh, in that in that final and you guys have a really – cool history. I, I saw, an, I believe it was an interview on flow. You were talking, I mean, you've known him for a while. Like give, give us that story again. That was pretty cool. So I always a coach at Fargo and his senior year, he was actually a 113 pounder, freshman year of high school, one state at 220 in the state of Missouri in a town uh, right outside of Springfield. Is it Nixa? Nixa, Missouri? Yeah. yeah. So it's three hours away from Kansas city area. Um, So I'm wrestling with him at Fargo. I'm like, this kid's pretty good. And he's like, yeah, thanks, and blah, blah, blah. I watched your videos, blah, blah, blah. And I was just fresh on – I was still doing good at senior level. I think I took second at the Open that year. And he's like, man, that's awesome. You're here coaching us at Fargo. I'm like, yeah, let's get a workout in. And he didn't place at Fargo, and he said, I'm going to a Division II school. And he went He went to a school, and uh, he he would text me and say, hey, Coach Bradley, is there any way I could come work out with you? And I'd be like, yeah, man, I'm – I think at the time I'm, I'm working out at Blue Springs, and I'm coaching there. And he's like – well, I'll just drive up and work out with you every Monday and Thursday. So this young man would drive three hours, three and a half hours from where he was at to my high school where I was coaching at. And I'd get off work to work out with me. Um, We'd work out. My high school coach, Mike Hattie, put us through a workout and he would shower and then drive back home and he would go lift weights. And then three days later, he would drive back up. And there's times that he would drive up on the 4th of July and say, hey, I'm here. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, uh, give me 20 minutes. I'll, I'll be up there. I'm sorry. Like I didn't, I thought it was the 4th of July. Um, <laughs> then when I, I moved to Nebraska, the train, I tell coach Manning and coach Maple and coach Schneider, I'm like, Hey, um, there's this kid, Christian Lance. He kind of, they kind of got an email from him. I said, Christian email. And I was just literally any coach that I was talking to at the time. I was, uh, trying to find a place to train. I was like, Hey, there's this heavyweight out there named Christian Lance. You guys got to talk to him. You got to talk to him. You got to talk to him. And I, I was plugging them everywhere I was going. And finally, they kind of like, mm, okay, let's see how good he is. And his technique is really good. He's just just lacking that co- competition thing. And uh, he finally got to Nebraska, and I was there for two years, and we trained hard. And um, he kind of lost some battles to some guys, but they finally put him in. And I just and Intravel ended up coming there and being his coach, and that really helped him that year. And he was an All-American. Yeah, it was a great story. I mean, and that – you know, a couple of years ago, heavyweight is stacked. I mean, I thought that was one of the better stories of that national tournament was seeing Christian Lance get on the stand. Incredible. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually, I'm not the reason why he was an all American, but I told him the game plan to beat the guy he had to wrestle in the blood round. And I gave him the plan to beat Wyatt Henderson because I had him scouted out pretty good for our guy, Zach Elam. And we ended up not getting into that spot. So I said, Christian, this is how you beat him in the backside. And he was like, okay. 
I said, I know Travell has a game plan, but here's mine too. I'm just going to throw my two cents in. And it, it actually, it worked. And I told him what to do to beat the Cornell kid. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm the reason why he's an all American, but I was giving him tips because my guy was out. So I'm saying, Hey, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Um, and we've wrestled on the senior level before we wrestled that we wrestled at the NYC last year. We wrestled that. I don't know. I've probably wrestled him four or five times, but literally I've seen a young man when he was, you know, 17 years old to now is whatever, 10 years later, I've seen him now. It's just like, wow. I mean, it's crazy. And I was just like excited to wrestle him in a, a finals of a tournament. I mean, cool. if somebody would have told you 10 years ago when you just met the kid, yeah, down the road, you guys are wrestling 2023 at the Senior Nationals uh, Finals. Uh, You've been know. like, what are you talking about? Yeah, there's actually another Missouri kid in the bracket, Demetrius Thomas. He's from uh, he's from St. Louis. So uh, it was cool. There's three Missouri guys in the bracket. And I, I'm just a guy who likes to stay in Missouri. So I always try to coach the Fargo team or, you know, I run national team practices for the kids and stuff, you know when I can. And uh, it's pretty cool to see Missouri heavyweights doing great like that. What do you love about coaching? You clearly love coaching. You're doing youth practices. You're a college coach. I mean, you're, you're a, you're a treasure. You're a treasure. What do you love about coaching? Uh, I just like the life lessons. You know, I could have been a kid. Like I told you the first high school I was at, I could have got, you know, I could be ending up with the people that were in my neighborhood who are in jail or dead or or gone or, you know, having a bad job or stuff like that. And it's changed my life. So I just want to help people as you know, I've probably been to, I don't even know how many countries I've been to maybe 18 or something. And I got my school paid for and all these great things. And it's like, it's a crazy a sport like wrestling. If you had told me that when I was third grade, I'd be like, no way that sport's stupid. And uh, yeah, I got free education and not everybody's going to get a free education, but I end up, being lucky enough to do that, uh, getting my master's degree paid for. Um, I met my wife through it. My kids are doing the sport now. So, I mean, wrestling's done a lot for me in my life. <laughs> and looking at some of the people that you've coached with, um, obviously, we'll, we'll start with Brian Smith. What's the biggest impact he's had on you from a like a coaching from a coaching standpoint? Because he's he's one of the best. Yeah, he's the best. Um, he just sets a great example. And um, what I mean by that is he, sometimes if you have an idea, he's going to give you full control of that idea. I'm like, hey, Coach Smith, what, why don't we try this technique? Okay, go run practice day and show it. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. Um, so he just kind of gives you that confidence and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's great. He's, he teaches you how to be a leader. You know, Coach Smith always talks about, you know, just being a, a good man, reading books and taking notes. I mean, I have so many notes on my phone that I never would have thought I would use or, you know, reading and just being prepared and how to run a meeting and how to structure a practice and how to structure fundraising and stuff like that, that I never thought about coaching. I'm like, man, I'm just going to show technique. Like, this is what I would do. This is, you know, that's probably 20% of wrestling and the other stuff you don't see behind the scenes. And I'm getting to see him do that. And I, and it's crazy. It's like, this man was raising three kids at the same time. And I'm just like, this dude's grumpy. He's just mean to me when I was in college. And now I'm like, oh, now I get it. Um, so it's really, really kind of cool to go like full circle. Like, I don't know how long I've known Coach Smith, probably since I was 15 years old. So it's just like, man, I kind of get what he's talking about now. You spent some time at Iowa State. Who did you uh, Who did you coach with there? I was training there. Um, so Kevin Jackson was there. He was the head coach. It's awesome. Um, I loved, I loved Kevin Jackson. Um, Andrew Escobedo was there. Um, the Paulsons were there. So I just got to learn a lot from being people like that. I got to meet Tyvin Gatson, who's a lifelong friend. Um, just being around people that are different. You can't just stay in your circle. And Coach Smith always has a saying, if you look at his coaching tree or if you look at where he came from, is you can't stay in where you're from and you can't stay there. So um, he always tells people that if you want to coach at Missouri, go coach somewhere else and get some experience, then I'll bring you back. Um, so I just started going to different places and I wanted to train under Olympic champ and Kevin Jackson. And um, it was awesome. It was the greatest thing ever to happen to me. And uh, yeah, I got to train with Kevin Gatson every day too for a year. So it was really cool. And then you were at Nebraska with, uh, with Mark Manning. What, yep. uh, 
you know, what stands out when you hear the name Mark Manning? That guy loves a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks a lot of coffee. Man, Coach Manning took a chance on me. A lot of great things from him. Um, just watching the way that he would run um, Jordan and James workouts were awesome. Um, when I was there, when I moved there, I kind of was like, hey, I'm just going to move here to train. You know, Jordan and James just did good at the World Team Trials. I just took second in Nebraska. Low did I know that Kendrick Maple was going to be the assistant coach there, and he just took second at the World Team Trials. So it was like, hey, there's four guys who were just in the World Team Trial Finals. One month later, we're all living in Lincoln. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, coach Schneider is a good coach, too. Um, but for me, the greatest thing about Nebraska, besides Coach Manning and being around Jordan and James, was – you know, I got to meet Coach Maple. I I grew up, he grew up in Kansas and Missouri. We're right next to each other. And I heard about him and I watched him in college, but um, then I got to be friends with him and really got to know. And uh, I kind of started to trust him. Um, I think as athletes, we kind of, you know, you don't want to listen to a coach or somebody who's younger than you. Um, at the time, I was like, I'm not going to listen to Kendrick Maple. Like, I'm two or three years older than him and I've wrestled in more freestyle terms. How's he going to help me get better at wrestling? And then finally, I just said, man, if this guy really wants to help me, I need to put my pride to the side and um, really trust this guy. And I did. And um, I ended up getting the job at Missouri and uh, some things happened. And uh, another coach at Missouri was leaving and I just said, Kendrick, a text. And I said, hey, man, there's something going on in Missouri. I would love to you to still be my coach. Would you want to come down here? And Somehow it happened. And I know Coach Manning's probably not happy about that because he knows how great of a coach Coach Maple is. Uh, but that was really cool. And just seeing, like, you know, Jordan Burroughs and James Green train, it was different, right? I couldn't train like them, but I would try to take things from them, how they they trained. And, you know, I'd pick up tips on how they would, you know, finish shots or how they would do their leg defense. And um, it was great there. But I got the opportunity to come back to Missouri, and Coach Smith said, hey, it's time for you to come home. And uh, I came home. Spending time with Jordan Burroughs, what's something that you have to witness consistently day in, day out, observing JB to really grasp the greatness of Jordan Burroughs? That dude does not want to lose in anything. Uh, he doesn't want to lose. He's not the greatest basketball player. He's not the greatest, uh, you know, ultimate Frisbee guy. But that dude don't want to lose. And he'll he'll fight and scratch, kick, claw for anything and just watching him uh, train, it's a professional. And yeah, I've trained the same way, but, you know, it's just like, hey, this guy's doing the, the same thing I am. But it's just like, hey, you know, he just does not want to lose. It's like, you know, every once in a while you're like, ah, it's okay, I'll get him back to the next one. It's like, there is no another one. You got to get it now. And that's that's how he is. And it's just like, that's the only guy I know that's older than me that's still competing at high level like that. The picture in the background, you and your family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, uh, where did you get that picture taken? What did you got? Three kids, you said, down. I got two. You got um, two kids. They were babies, so we're in the process of moving right now. I just bought a house last week. Oh, congrats! Um, yeah, so I'm just in the kitchen hanging out. Um, I just put my kids to bed before I came on, but just a picture of us. This is probably five or six years ago. So when they were babies, now they're not that little. They're they're giants now. <laughs> What's your favorite part about being a dad? Oh man, they'll humble you real quick. <laughs> they just they just keep you honest. Uh, you know, you know. I thought I was cool. I won this tournament. All these people on uh, social media. I retweet your tweet about you know being cool, and they're like, "Hey, uh, are you gonna take me to school?" I know I got home at ten thirty last night, and they, they come in the room at six thirty. Hey, you taking us to school? You taking us to school? And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I missed you too." Uh, but it's just crazy, you know. It's just they they keep you on your toes and they they keep you grounded and uh, you just always got to be you know ready to teach them stuff and it's fun you know I'm trying to teach them how to be good people we're kind of having with Christmas right now I'm trying to tell them hey Santa Claus is going to come if you're going to act like that so yeah. <laughs> well I had asked you when we were lining this interview up I'm like your kids realize that, that you know their dad is Superman I mean pretty, nah, pretty cool let me that. ask you this Dom. Um, when you think, you know, being a parent yourself now, what's, what's something you have a new appreciation for with your own father? I don't know how he coached me. I don't, I can, I remember just getting in a lot of fights with him because, um, I'd have an attitude with him and man, does my daughter have an attitude with me right now sometimes. Um, but I just really realized that you got to be patient and 
Um, coaching my son right now in youth uh, is different. Um, it's not the same way my dad coached me. And I'm just, I try to make sure he has fun. I just try to make sure it's fun. And I don't really care if he wants to compete in a tournament right now. I'm like, Hey, we don't have to do anything. I just want you to enjoy the sport. And my favorite thing tonight is I said, Hey, we got to leave. I got an interview with Shane Sparks at eight 30. And he goes, I want to finish conditioning. And I said, you are not my son. You must get that from your mom. Cause I do not <laughs> want any conditioning. He's like, well, can I run some extra stairs later? And I said, yeah, buddy, but we got to go home. I got to get ready for this interview. So, yeah. Well, that's great. I got one more question for you just on this Missouri team. Some good things happening in Columbia. You got the national tournaments uh, in March in Kansas city. You know, when you look at this team, what has you most excited and what'll be the most critical thing for you guys, you know, the rest of the season to get what you want. Man, just these guys just believing in uh, the coaching staff and believing in themselves. This is probably, you know, they're going to hear this. I'm going to say this is the most talented team I've ever been around. You know, I've, besides that team I was telling you about in 2007 with Ben Asker and I got to watch those guys, this this team is just as good. You know, there's there's Keegan O'Toole is just – he's a wrestling – like I learned so much from that kid and it's crazy. And he's like, hey, Coach Tom, what if I did this, 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 and this? And I'm like, yeah, let's go try it. And it's so fun to work with a guy like that. That's a guy who motivates me. That's a guy who's like, Coach Dom, let's go to Olympic trials together. I'm like, Hey, yeah, Keegan, how about you go? And I'll, I'll watch. I'll, I'll let Ben and Ben Asker and Maple coach. He's like, No, you're my coach too. And I'm like, Yeah, but those guys are pretty good. But uh, <laughs> it's cool. Um, you got guys like Zach and Rocky Elam, who I've literally known since they were three and four years old. And now I'm coaching those guys and they're doing good. There's guys like Colton Hawks, who is our 84 pounder one of our 84 pounders who I've coached, I've seen him since he was five years old. And so many guys, we have kids from, you know, Michigan and Josh Edmond and Noah Surt from Illinois, who's still undefeated at 25, which 25 is a meat grinder. And, 25 uh, is the craziest weight class I've ever seen in 30 years. I mean, they're down yeah. 125. There might not be 40 guys that can win that weight class, but there might be 40 guys that believe they can win it. I mean, oh, that yeah. weight class, God only knows. I mean, if somebody said to me right now, here's a crystal ball, what's the one thing you're most curious to see play out? It might be who wins 125, because I have no clue, no idea. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that guy's in Columbia, Missouri, and his name's <laughs> Noah Certain, because that dude's on fire right now. And he, he'll he tell you all about how good he is. He's the most popular <laughs> guy I know. Um, and we got so many. We got, we got three six-year seniors on our team. And they just have great leadership in uh, – I'm just really proud of all these guys. Every guy that's in the lineup right now, besides our, our 33 who's young, they're all going to leave college with a master's degree. And that's the coolest part. And that's what I said. The one thing I would change is I would want to go get a master's degree. But when I graduate and these guys are going to be in college for five, six years, and they're going to have master's degrees. And half our lineup is, you know, world team members. You know, Zach Elam, world silver medalist. Rocky Elam, junior world champ. Keegan O'Toole, a million tournaments, you know, Colton Hawks, junior world team member, Brock Mahler. It's like, oh, hey, then these other guys are, you know, Josh Edmonds, a U-20 world champ. I could talk about our team all day. It's just there's so many guys in our lineup that are – we got kids from California. We got Wisconsin. Every state you can think of, it's it's great. And we got so many other good kids coming in in the future. And, man, it's just a great time to be a Tiger. I know, uh, you know, Penn State's doing great and Iowa's doing great and Oklahoma State and all these programs. But – you know, Missouri, Missouri's on the come up. We have a great staff, uh, great kids here. So good things are coming. Well, Dom, I've kept you a long time, but you got just so much wrestling knowledge, so many great stories and uh, can't thank you enough. This was a ton of fun. Uh, thank you so much for the time, Dom. Congratulations once again on qualifying for your fourth Olympic trials, which is crazy. And uh, good luck, you know, down the stretch with your guys in Missouri. But thank you so much. It's been a blast. Thank you. Thank you for having me.